Okay, so this, uh, sorry. You go from a quiet speaker to a loud one. All right. So my name's Chris Sabosian. Uh, I'm the Director of Business Development at Intrepid. Um, mostly responsible for Europe, um, but I spent a lot of time the last four years also handling our West Coast office uh, operations. And then this is Brian Jones. So he's the engineer responsible um, for the product that we're gonna talk about today. So he's here as my backup for any questions. <laughs> so the presentation here is um, basically revolving around autonomous technology and how we handle all of the data that's being produced by an autonomous vehicle. So what do you get in an autonomous car? Uh, tons and tons of sensors. So Don had that picture up earlier today that had uh, the autonomous stuffed car that had you know, multiple LIDARs on top, radars, cameras. Um, you know, they're still using CAN, CANFD, FlexRay, automotive ethernet, and even 10 gigabit um, that, that Don mentioned this morning. It all equates to gigabits, gigabytes of data per second. So how, do you, how can you possibly log that? Um, it's several gigabits of data from all of those sensors, the LIDARs and everything. And of course, what do you guys want to do when you're recording data? You want to get everything. You want all data, right? So you have to have something that's going to be you know, very high capacity in terms of bandwidth for logging and in terms of storage. You know, most of our data loggers today we ship them with uh, about a 32 gigabyte SD card is about our average common size. You, in, in this situation, you're gonna fill that up in minutes, literally. Um, some of our devices have done camera logging for a while, and same thing, you, you won't get very much time out of that uh, 32 gigabytes. So in this here, we have six gigabits fills about six terabytes in around two hours. And as the vehicles evolved, so this is uh, an image basically that's showing from the early CAN days, or e even before CAN, early only specific days, to today, and to what you know is probably going to happen with Ethernet eventually taking over everything. Also, uh, this is a, a slide from Broadcom, but basically saying that. 100% of cars will be connected by 2025, and 75% of them will be autonomous by 2035. That might be a bit of a stretch, but it's, it's definitely possible. And then also, how do you analyze terabytes and terabytes of data? You know, how do you offload that? So typically, again, with our standard data loggers, you know, you've got an SD card, you plug that into your computer, and you do an extraction process. And that can take, you know, 32 gigabytes, that could take an hour or so. But then what happens is you're just loading up your PC with a bunch of data. So we're talking terabytes worth of data. Nobody's laptop has te multiple terabyte hard drives. You know, maybe you have one that has a two terabyte or something, but it's not like you've got a, hard, a laptop with a 12 terabyte drive on it where you can download data to. And then the time to offload that data from a data logger would take forever. And it, you know, we're, in, we're, in the, we're living in the world of instantaneous. We want things now. You know, we don't, people look at their cell phone, it doesn't load in a half a second. You want to throw it through the wall. So what's been going on now with autonomous cars? So this is an actual image from an autonomous car that I found online. Crazy amount of instrumentation. So that looks like there's, looks like there's three PCs in there bunch of other rack mounted acquisition systems, huge power supplies on the bottom. And most of this stuff is consumer grade stuff. This isn't industrial quality, this isn't built for automotive use. They're just basically building high end gaming machines and putting them in the back of cars. So nobody's, you know, that's not a, a real solution. You can't have fleets of test cars that are all instrumented like this. Especially when you know, OEMs, they start giving cars to managers and executives and, and the press. They can't be drive around with cars like that. Uh, it also requires too much power for vehicles to run stuff like this. 
And I mean, I've personally seen some of these setups where they've just got multiple computers also with their own separate storage volumes, all the data's everywhere, and then so it's someone's job to kind of go through it all and merge it all back together. So you end up looking like that guy. So what is our solution to this problem? This is the RAD Gigalog. So we actually have a demo of this in the back. You may have already seen it. Uh, it's paired up with a stereo camera and a, um, what's that module that's back there? The, the, the TX1, yeah. yeah, the NVIDIA TX1. So that's back there, so anybody that wants to go see it, it, it is, is real, it is working back there. So this is a very long list of uh, items we have on this, but like I said, we're trying to replace as much as we can of what that, that trunk looked like. So you've got one 10 gigabit ethernet uh, interface, two uh, 10, 100, 1000 ethernet interfaces, two 100 base T1 automotive ethernet, um, USB 3, for base, uh, that'll be used for the data offload and configuration, two USB host ports to use with our accessories like our Neovine mic, um, also um, for powering things like our Rad Moon, Rad Super Moon, eight isolated CANFD channels, two flex array networks for receiving, so basically just for data logging, uh, one LIN network, um, and then the other big part of this is our camera taps. So we have support for tapping FPD Link 3 or Maxim GMSL2 uh, cameras. So our final revision of this product will have uh, the, ca the capacity to do three taps out of the, uh, those two different camera networks. And that'll be basically up to the customer and what those three are uh, when we configure the device. And then the, the logging aspect of it is we have 12 parallel full-size SD cards internal to this device. So as of today, the largest SD card you can buy is 512 megabytes. So as of today, the largest capacity we can do is six terabytes in one rad gigalog. SanDisk announced a one terabyte card over a year ago. So whenever they decide to actually make it for sale, we'll be able to use that card and then you have a 12 terabyte capacity device. We have a super capacitor for power failure protection. And then our total um, power draw is 18 watts. So compare that again to that picture I showed you, much, much lower uh, power consumption. And then another big part is we'll have time synchronization capabilities with other Intrepid tools. So that could be, for example, our NeoVi Ion, our wireless data logger, um, any of our Ethernet products, and then also just multiple gigaloggers. Uh, there's also a built-in IMU and uh, GPS as well. So some examples um, here, we have just one for high-speed data acquisition. So we have um, a block of uh, eight uh, CAN ECUs, 200 base T1s, two LVDS cameras, and an autonomous controller that we're utilizing our 10 gig E interface for. All of that combined logging at about six gigabits per second. So we don't have concrete real uh, test numbers yet, but we will be at over six gigabits per second on a data acquisition rate. And then the Neovi Mic 2 you see at the bottom, that's actually a, a trigger button that has a microphone built into it so you can trigger the logging and record the audio of, of exactly why you press that. The other thing that'll be available on this product is to run our vehicle spy scripting engine. So you'll be able to actually filter data um, that you don't want to log. So if there's only certain data you want to acquire, you can script that into the Gigalog and it will only acquire that data so you can save space. And then in this scenario, we have um, what we like to call a stack of Gigalogs. Um, so there's four pictured here, all connected to an autonomous controller and then connected to a total of eight cameras. So if you have a vehicle that has multiple cameras in it, you can use multiple gigalogs all synced together over CAN or Ethernet. And we'll log everything um, and log them all to the gigalogs and everything will, will share the, the same uh, time sync. And all the video data is going to be uncompressed camera data. So it's all your native uh, resolution video feed. So here's an actual image of some gigalogs stacked together and then um, you can't really tell what it is on the very end but it has the blue boots and that's our Neovi Ion. 
So in case you're wondering what the size is, if you're familiar with Arneal by ion, it's exactly the same uh, case. And then we've got uh, the camera there, and then that's our Neo by Mike 2 uh, picture. Another uh, scenario was is we can log and forward uncompressed camera data over Ethernet. So we can tap two cameras, three cameras, and then forward that video stream live, essentially, to uh, something um, like vehicle spy on your PC or to an autonomous controller. So we have a lot of customers that have come to us and said, hey, I have this autonomous controller, and I've got these cameras, and I, the, maybe the cameras are FPD linked, but the controller only takes GMSL. So we can forward that video stream and convert it to uh, what the autonomous controller needs, which is what this slide is. So be basically doing FPD link three and GMSL conversion. So we can translate between these two camera standards. Also, we have some other products, um, which uh, I believe we're talking about tomorrow, like our CM probe. Um, but basically, the Gigalog can be utilized as a storage NAS, so a network attack storage for other devices. So we have our Rad Galaxy, for example. Our Rad Galaxy is a multi-tap, six multi-tap uh, Ethernet device with can eight CANFD channels. That device has some standalone logging capability, but again, it's just a one single SD card. So you could link the Galaxy with the Gigalog and also with like our Ion or Fire 2 device and use the Gigalog as the storage medium for those devices. Our CM probe is a calibration tool. It's a memory emulator um, that communicates over Ethernet. Uh, and the Gigalog could be used to acquire data from that device and also then communicate to like an XCP master or vehicle spy. And then some of the configuration options for this product. So um, we have lo basically low power or high performance options. Um, and that's how the, uh, the, the layout works for the uh, data acquisition. Like I said, there's, in this image we have um, basically six 256 gigabyte cards so this is using our uh, Neovi Explorer utility, so that's what it'll be used to set up the storage medium on the Gigalog. So you can format the disks individually or do a full format with this utility to prepare the Gigalog. And then the other big thing that, I, so I mentioned in the beginning is it would take you forever to actually download all that data. So one of the features of the Gigalog is of course you can offload the data and we can do it over USB 3 over, or over Ethernet. Or you can just play it back right from the device. So you don't actually have to download the data to your PC. You can just use the Gigalog and Vehicle Spy and just play back the data directly from the device without actually having um, to transfer any files anywhere. All right, so that was a, a short and quick presentation, but I assume that we would have some questions. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that you have a uh, you have an IMU in there, and I'm assuming it's a, a dynamic couple processing on the IMU, or is it just raw data? And, and what kind of and, and what what kind of components? Is this just basic memory, commercial grade stuff you would see in the smartphone? I'll let Brian answer that. Yeah, we have. You have a microphone. IMU. some sort of standardized reporting of periodic once a second or whatever of accelerometer or uh, uh, what's the other one? Yeah, I think the gyro and the acceleration. So, I mean, if you have, correct, yeah. Um, you could, you could add uh, your own custom processing to the scripting engine if you wanted to do something with that data. Um, but as it stands right now, it's just a reporting. So you could you could make some calculation off of the off of the recorded result, but we don't do any processing on it as it stands. Um, I mean, they're they're industrial grade components, but yeah, it's probably similar functionality of what you'd see in a smartphone. Yeah. Yes.
I'm going to repeat the question. So the question was, do we have a pr proprietary file system on the SD cards? high-performance mode is all cards all at the same time, so in order to handle that properly, you have to format across all of the disks simultaneously, and so the, the device itself knows how the format is over all the dis disks, so, so those are the two different options, but the format is a standardized format, and, but, it's, but it's segmented over all the disks like that. Did you tell us any story? It kind of follows the same backbone we've been using on most of our other data loggers with how we write the data to the cards. So we've have, we have you know, over 10 years experience in the data logger industry. And over that 10 years, we've learned you know, what use cases can cause things like data corruption. And usually the biggest one was abrupt power loss. So that's why all of our newer products have the, the super cap on them to, to protect against that. Yep. Another question, you, you mentioned using fat file systems for your cards, mm -hmm. um, so I assume you're doing something to handle like the four gigabyte file, individual file limit? Yeah, yeah, so, so right now we have support for the FAT32, which is at that limit, and we use two or four gigabyte limit, and then for larger than that, uh, not there yet, but we're going to move to something else, maybe an XFAT or something, we're still investigating different format options to maintain the high speed for like the fast speed. Any other questions? Okay, like I said, anybody that's interested in this, there is an operational demo of it in the back. And uh, next up is diagnostics over IP and socket adapter diagnostics.